In this lecture, we're going to discuss uh, the reactions of water with metals, uh, and we're going to discuss this uh, keeping in mind the reactivity series, and uh, and we will uh, try and discuss this using the reactivity of the metals. So, starting with the first uh, metals, group one, uh, these are extremely reactive. So, so these metals when they react with water, the reactions that would occur are that potassium, for example, reacts with water. It's going to produce potassium hydroxide which is a very strong alkali and it's going to give off uh, it's going to give off hydrogen gas so we can we can balance this entire equation so that's the reaction that would occur and that's the reaction that would occur with all group 1 metals so these are the most reactive the most reactive group 1 metals now the certain things about this reaction the first thing is it's going to be an explosive so it's going to be a very explosive, a very vigorous reaction, and you're going to see you're going to see effervescence. So a lot of bubbles of hydrogen gas. So there, there's going to be effervescence, or you can say you can call that fizzing. So there would be a lot of fizzing. Uh, the the another thing is that potassium and other group one metals have very low density. So so they're going to float on the surface of water so they're going to float on the surface of water so these are some of the uh, things that you would observe when uh, group 1 metals the highly reactive group 1 metals react uh, the other uh, element that we're going to discuss is as we, as we move lower down in the reactivity C so for example if you look at calcium now calcium the reaction would decrease its reactivity decreases so the reaction becomes slower so calcium with water is going to produce calcium hydroxide and it's going to give off it's going to give off hydrogen gas so that's the reaction of calcium with water this reaction uh, it's going to be it's going to be a slow reaction when you when you're dealing with cold water so when you're dealing with the cold water so it's going to be a slow reaction you're going to see slight effervescence so the reaction would be slow reaction with cold water and you're going to see very slight effervescence so very slight effervescence and an alkali would be produced but it wouldn't be as strong as KOH uh, that we discussed for group 1 elements so calcium the reaction would be slightly slower and uh, if you heat it, it's going to take place at a very fast pace. Magnesium. Now, when you come to magnesium and discuss the reaction with magnesium, again the same reaction reacts with water, producing magnesium hydroxide and giving off hydrogen gas. But this reaction is almost non existent with cold water, so you need steam, it needs steam. So H2O must be in the form of steam and it needs high temperatures. So this reaction occurs at higher temperatures, not at lower temperatures. Now the next element in line is aluminium. Although aluminium, so the next element in line is aluminium, although aluminium is, is sort of high in the reactivity series, but has no reaction, almost no reaction with water I mean you will not you will never see aluminium rusting or reacting with water and the reason is that a, a strong non-porous and unreactive coating of Al2O3 on its surface protects it what that basically means is that if you have a piece of aluminium for example this is a block of aluminium so on the surface there's going to be this coating of Al2O3 its oxide would be formed so if there's aluminium in, in the middle 
the top surface would react it would immediately form a coating of al2o3 but this coating is very unreactive it's non porous nothing get, can get through it so this coating would protect a uh, further reaction of aluminium so nothing would be able to get to aluminium so but this is the reason why aluminium has absolutely no reaction when you react it with water and as you move further down for example if you talk about zinc and iron now for zinc and iron the reactions with water would be extremely slow reactions and so the reactions with water would be extremely slow and what, what, what I mean by the term extremely slow is that it's going to take months, weeks or years for zinc or iron to react with water. So if you, if you have an iron chair or anything made out of iron and you throw it into a swimming pool, uh, the reaction is going to take a very, very, very long time. And this is also uh, called in case of iron, we call this as rusting of iron. So rusting of iron is a very slow, gradual process. So we can discuss rusting of iron in this. Uh, it needs uh, moisture and it needs uh, air which contains O2 for rusting to occur. And it's a very slow gradual process taking weeks, months and years for, for iron to actually completely react with water. Uh, so the reactions are going to be extremely slow. And as you move further down the group, the reactivity would almost drop down to almost there would almost be no reaction so the reactivity decreases further for example if you look at gold uh, gold would take centuries or even millenniums to actually have some sort of uh, reaction with water so so the reactions and then the reactivity decreases so much that they almost have no reaction so so they have almost no reactions with cold water or with any sort of water